Well, good morning, friends, on Facebook and YouTube and and uh, whatever else uh, you find, wherever else you might find us on the internet. And uh, we just enjoy coming to your place, into your home, onto your uh, tablet or your phone or your computer or however you watch the Mid Morning Manna. We're glad that you're there. This week we're talking about, uh, I think, a very important subject. The title is The Blessings of Giving. And I said blessings because there's more than one. There are many blessings. We talked about yesterday, I, I quoted part of this verse, Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You, folks, God's t just saying you can't outgive God. You give and you receive. We're givers, and we're givers that want to receive, and God said that we should be faithful in this matter. So today we're going to go over to Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10, another vital principle in this matter of giving. In Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10. Listen, let me read you the verse, then we'll talk about it just a little bit. It says this, he said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. God wants to bless you. God wants to supply your need, but God said he wants you to supply the need of the ministry of the church to reach a lost and dying world. It would be wonderful if everything uh, that we needed to do the work for Christ was just automatically put in our lap and it was all free and, and uh, we automatically had hundreds of Bibles to give away and, and thousands of tracts to give away and, and a, a nice building to meet in to hear the preaching and the, and the music and the prayer time and all those kind of things and, and somebody else would pay for it out of whatever. But God has allowed us those of us who are saved, he's allowed us to have that part of the ministry. And so he said, bring the tithes to the storehouse. Well, the storehouse, he's talking about the local church where the people meet, where they are spiritually fed. And uh, he wants to meet with you. He wants to feed your spirit. But he also wants you to have the joy and the blessing of being able to give tithes and offerings to help that ministry go forward. I know a lot of people don't tithe. I understand that. They think they can't. They, they, they don't really have the faith to do it. But, you know, the Bible says that we're supposed to do it. God is never going to lead you down a dark hole with no end. He, he, God loves you. He knows what the need is in the ministry. He's the one that has asked us to bring the tithes to the storehouse. He doesn't. It's not for his riches. He's already in heaven. He's already, He's on streets of gold, gates of pearl, all this kind of thing. There's nothing we can afford to buy for heaven's sake. But we can afford to give that tithe and trust God then to supply our need. And as we tithe and as we give, we believe that give and it shall be given unto you. God will supply that need. He will make a way. And in some cases, God may has, have blessed you uh, overwhelmingly in unusual ways with maybe bonuses or, or some other kind of, of gifts that have come your way, inheritances or something like that. And maybe you could share part of that with the work of the Lord, at least the tithe the 10% that God said that we ought to bring. And, and that's basically, that's part of what God has put into place that will help us be what he wants us to be. I want to be a growing Christian. I want to be a giving Christian. I want to be a Christian that God can use, that God can trust, and uh, that he could perhaps make me an even greater channel of blessing, able to do more than I think is even possible. So he said, bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord. He wants you to put him, he wants you to prove, put him to the test. He said, let me demonstrate to you how I will supply all your need according to my riches and glory. It's God's riches and glory that he's going to supply our need. And he wants to supply your need. He wants to be a blessing to you. Will you allow him to do it? So think about that. 
when you get ready to go to church this Sunday, I hope you think now, how much income did I have this week? Am I going to trust God? Am I going to give God an opportunity to prove to me that he'll take care of me by giving that top 10% to him? Number one, God's number one in my life. Jesus is number one. The Holy Spirit's number one. God the Father, God the Spirit, God, God, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the great three in one. And he wants to work through us and through the local churches. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's God's plan for us to serve him as part of a local church to get the work of Christ done, to get the gospel message to the whole world. And you say, well, what proportion should I give? 10%. That's what the tithe is. 10%. That's not a huge amount. And if we will be frugal with the rest and with the other 90%, you might be amazed at how much you can accomplish with it if you'll do it God's way. Allow him to work in your life. Trust him. Put him to the test. See if he comes through for you. Let's pray together here. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege that we have to pray. I thank you, Lord, that as tithers, we can always know that you're there for us to supply our need, to, Lord, to help us and get us through the tough times in life and uh, to bless us and help us to be a testimony and help us to be a blessing to the people of God. Father, we just give you the praise for it. We love you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.